Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Today's episode of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our bonus packages. Please go to MikeO'MaraShow.com and click on the bonus banner. You'll get access to all of our bonus content, and even better, you'll be helping out TMOS. So please, quit sucking, and we thank you. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeO'MaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Let's start today, huh, Rob? Jesus. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, wow. You, uh, Guns are blazing. Someone, Santana uh, comes in just out of his mind well, Pony's today. got the worst communication skills ever. I don't want to talk about it, but he says there's a fire. I know. I won't talk I know. about it either. I know. He says there's a fire, right? And as soon as somebody says there's a fire, I like to run to the fire, not run away from the fire. I right. know. So I, I know. dive like, in, and I'm you're like, like, you Will Smith. big dummy. You big dummy. Tell me there's a fire with the detail, please. Hey, Pony. Yes, sir. Uh uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, we can't talk about it, obviously, mm-hmm, because right. uh, it's it's sensitive information. Yeah, we're fixing. But it. I will ask you this: uh, if you were a betting man, uh, mm-hmm. what percentage of this fire you thought might be happening would you say is true? Wait, and what percent of this is just like nothing? Seventy-five percent. Oh, you so you think oh, he, that's uh, the sense yeah. of urgency I got in the text, Mike. I'm not just making this up. But so you know you, what? Seventy five might not be that problem. That is that is truly a pony percentage. Because what that is is that's not saying it's really a problem, but it's saying eh, it might be a problem. No, I'd be no, so much no, happier se- with a hundred no, or ten. Am I reading this right? He's saying seventy five percent that it's that problem. It's what yeah, seventy five percent that yeah, it's yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me see if I can speak in code. Do you think it's more of what uh, what what would be the worst case situation, or more of the it's just a glitch? I think it's more likely the worst case situation. Yeah, that's what I thought. See, mm-hmm. that's what he said. Yeah, so yeah. he is saying that. Yeah, he's saying he thinks it's what your worst fear is. Yeah, but Oscar data would show that that's not the case yet. So when you say that there's a blaze and the place is burned down, I go to it and it looks like it might be a technical issue. That's about it. And even with his strong opinion, he's only giving it a strong C. Pony, are you able to communicate in code? Can you can you counter Oscar with what you're saying? He doesn't have access to that data. He doesn't. This he is doesn't true. Have, yes. Well, they, even without it, but I'm, I'm just curious what he has to say. Yeah, we actually like to hear that. <laughs> well, basically, I saw a problem on one end that got me very nervous, and I was wondering if perhaps there's a delay before this uh, same problem would crop up on a different system. Mm. Which is why I was concerned. That was a good code. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> well, what do you think, Oscar? I, you think I, no? It would have been nice if said, hey, this system is up and but, running, but this system isn't. Do you mind looking into it? I understand it? that. I I'm, I'm, but I'm more concerned about uh, moving forward, you see. Right. I'm more concerned about what your Mike, percentage is. you know who is. I have on it what, right what, now? What, I have my wife on it, and we will know within uh, 30 minutes what the problem is. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. That's how diligent I am while we're talking. Mrs. Z. Yeah, Mrs. Z is looking into it as we speak. Lady Z. Yep. All right. So that's why why I'm like, eh, all right, well, we'll know. Right, right. I want to do a real deep dive if it if it happens to be, oh, to be the I worst case so. scenario. I, I, I want so. scorched yes. earth. Yes. I want I, I want sure. my pound of flesh. I agree. That, you so, won't, sorry you won't about that code, it. folks. No, no, I like sorry. code. Really, Look, really sorry about that. We just won't give the Bitcoin to the Russians. We just won't do it. You know, no, it's never. Just, uh, we never have, and the we never will. The Ukrainians, they're they're a little nicer, maybe. Yeah, yeah. not the Russians. Uh, welcome to the uh, yes. Mike O'Mara show. I'm not you know, down it, with it, most of Eastern Europe. The amazing thing about uh, human interaction, even people you've worked with for a long time, is you will find something out right before the show goes on, and that you didn't <laughs> know before. I didn't know that Oscar, as a small child, mm. had a heart murmur until. Yep. Six seconds before right. we started the show. Leaky, I didn't know that leaky Oscar. Ventricle, Mike, leaky ventricle. Uh, that's not the same as a heart murmur. Oh, who knows? A, a ventri- uh, <laughs> leaky balls. Oscar was talking about <laughs> having a sonogram, and I had one on my balls. <laughs> Mike, a sonogram is the image produced by an ultrasound procedure. I know what the it is. You don't sonogram, have to read me. What it, anybody that's well, ever like, been pregnant, you malad yeah, You've had two has kids. had a sonogram. But did you know, Mike, the term loosely <laughs> translates as sound writing? It sound it sound images yeah, that, that exactly. produce a picture. That's right. That's what it anything is. on your body. Sonar for your body. <laughs> I thought I had a problem uh, <laughs> with the the testicles. Well, look what you and did. So I had like one fun, done on my and balls. And maybe something was... you would do like on the black market. 
But, but here it is. So the, the, the you have a leaking uh, aortic valve. Is that what I you have? To. It's all healed healed up now. I I had. I don't uh, know if they heal. Do they? Do they well, heal? The, uh, my parents sure false. Let me... Leaky Leaky Ventricle was your old DJ name. You they told what? me. I think they say that to a lot of people. They told me Franklin I had one Mass. years ago <laughs> when I got a stress test before I stopped getting them. Yes. Oh. <laughs> you know, in my case, it's just going to be one day. You know, mm-hmm. I'm going to go full Charlie Daniels one day. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> He lived, <laughs> he lived to see the election. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I just wish he wasn't so right wing. That's all you saw yesterday with people talking about Charlie's politics. You know, but they always said he was fair. I like to he was fair. The music, Mike. He was yeah. firm but fair. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anywho, uh, so I didn't know you had this, and, yeah. and you're worried about your. I'm worried about the medical. You're bills. worried about your doctor padding the bill. Oh, my, that's what it's called. Thank you. Padding, that's what that's padding, Thank the, bill. You. padding right. the bill. That's what it's called. Uh, I went in for my physical, my and it's and it's quick. The play this place is like um, I would say a chop shop for doctors. I like them because they always have openings. This is how bad my. Is it a Bolivian practic- doctor office? No, 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 no. It, this this person's from a foreign land. I barely see them. I always see the general practitioner. Is it okay. Millennium Physicians Group? No, 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 no. That's what we no, have in Florida. No, no, That's no, my no. doctor. You went to that practice where you can always get in. Yeah, yeah, I but you have to be can- under twenty nine. <laughs> you have to. No, it's you always get in, but I think I always think that maybe that results in the, a different level of the care. The sanitation is not nice. Like within, oh. I guess the hyg- for a doctor's office in the middle of COVID nineteen. I go to my dentist. It looks like all right. An We're on the same page. Mine too. Always access. Easy to get yeah, in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Walk into the office. Yeah. You look at the chairs. Yeah. You look at the lack of pictures on when, the walls. When the kitchen at my at, at our office. Right. And I'm not talking about like uh, marble countertops. It's just like a formica top. Looks at like the it's office. been sanitized prior yes. to, yeah. uh, compared to your doctor. I get yes. it. Yes. I but quit a doctor because um, I had a gastro guy who was very well regarded. But when I did an office visit with him, he had like bankers' boxes stacked in the corner of documents and total disorganization. And then I got confirmed for an appointment for the wrong name. I said, I can't trust a doctor that can't even run an office. My. I agree with you, but that's clerical. This is sheerly, like, generally a, a, a hygiene hygiene issue where I believe interrelated. I think that the turn at the front of the desk screams inefficient because there's a lot of people, like a new person every time I go. I'm a right. guy. Look, I don't care how uh, low down uh, the uh, on the chain of successful physicians you are. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> spruce up the way. Yes, yeah, just a little bit, and and do. You know, hire a person. Yeah, uh, you know to get in it's there the and, details, and clean the waiting room. Like the room. pamphlets that are faded in the corner because nobody's ever taken the pamphlets. Magazines from <laughs> yeah. twenty eighteen. Yeah, exactly. I Come on, I don't touch magazines, Mike. Are you kidding me? I'm not trying to touch anything in that place. No, but I mean, look, yeah. I go in there and there's not one piece of artwork on the wall. There are taped up yep. warnings about the flu. That's not Taped cool up. for me. That is such a good. That is such a good no. observation. They don't Taping. even have them in a frame. You know what? Yeah. You know what? You know. You know who did tape Omeras? I had to. I had to like. I had to <laughs> wrestle with these people not to tape up signs with scotch tape. It the stays up there. Laziest way of decorating. All right, a Budweiser flyer poster for St. Patrick's Day with scotch tape. Take it down. Please okay. take it down. Then work with me here. And mind you, I'm not going anywhere. This has been my uh, general practitioner for the last six, six, seven years. I just I okay. like my guy, too. Uh, I like before. my yeah. guy, too. The EKG machine looked like something out of the 1970s. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm worried about that they're working on your ticker no, 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 all the no, time. No. I didn't need anything. And this is my, 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 my. My overall, my doctor, doctor, I haven't seen her in three years. I just see the newbie that comes through, right? Right. right. Um, so she is uh, a, a, a Sally salesman because she always says, and tell me tell me about something else. So I'm sitting there like rattling all my symptoms. I was like, I had a heart murmur when I was a kid. I want to ask about your newbie doctor that came in, okay? Yes. So I'm going to play a series of, uh, uh, no, not that one. No. Ah, that region? No, 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 no. This is okay. This, how about how about this one? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. She's like no. you and Rob. Really? really? Oh, the white more devil? Like, more, like, more like you, Irish. 
European American, <laughs> too stupid to wear masks. <laughs> she's and she is sweet and kind, but very. Oh, you need this test, this test, this, and I'm like, I don't think I need that. Like, I and I actually said I've been cleared for my murmur for the last. 20 years. Like, I've My gone, I, I've been cleared. Dun, 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 My murmur. I said, so I, I'm good. Are you sure this wasn't a chiropractor? Because chiropractors are ones that say medicine, but really act no. sales. She said, I can't let you leave without the EK, EKG. And I'm like, how long is that going to take? She goes, what's it going to take to put you in this EKG machine <laughs> Ten today? 10 minutes. I said, fine. <laughs> I'm already here. And by, by the way, way, it's in Kensington. It's not like it's close. If we're talking about the EKG, and Kansas. you don't even, you know what's great about Oscar sometimes, Rob? He comes what? in, he doesn't even know it, I think, sometimes when he's giving me material. And yeah. as soon as he mentioned heart murmur, I said, well, there's the opening of the show today. Yeah, dang. The EKG, I have always felt that the EKG is a a woefully inadequate test. And now people mm. go, oh my God, no, no. But it seems to me, anything you're on, when you're talking about your heart, like say you've got a little palpitation. Mm-hmm. Sure. Where your heart does a little jumpy, jumpy and a, and a flutter. And they, and they ask you, well, let's do an EKG. And they put you on an EKG for like seven seconds. Yeah. Right. And they look at like three little blips and go, that looks good to me. Well, you got to wait a half hour before you get one of the blippity blips. You know exactly. what I mean? These are the words that were said to me. You were just in traffic, right? I'm like, yeah. He goes, well, this isn't going to read out right because you're probably a little stressed. I said, really? Yeah. Did you have a little mini stress test? Is what, what you I had? said, what happened to the 10 minutes? She goes, well, you're going to have to wait 20 minutes before I give you the CKG. And I'm like, but I got all the stuff on me. What, I'm going to rip it off? Be like, see you later. I'll come back in a year. No. So I sat, I sit there like a good patient. You know I what happened to him, Mike? Looks good. And by the way, if you have a ticker tape EKG machine, you got to retire it. Spend your money. Like, a, a oh, it's the almost economy. like having a, b- a ball made, uh, I a want dot an, matrix I, I printer. Want an, yeah. an iPad. I don't need this little, this ribbon printer paper coming out. I think they may still out. print out so they can look at the, Garbage. the length. It's they, a they, digital they, age. I don't know. It I looks like know. a Xerox printer. You might be wrong about that. For, I no, would not even say, I, I would one. say this. It was a Xerox printer when Xerox made printers <laughs> in the 1970s. <laughs> <laughs> you may be wrong about that. Okay, well, look. That Technology looked- aside, I know one thing that did happen, and again, I can correlate it to a, to a car dealership. When they taped him up with those wires, that's the equivalent of them saying, let's have the keys to the car you came in, and so we can take a look at it. And then they've got your keys. They've got you. You were yeah, stuck there because you were all over. wired up. Yeah. I'm just, I, how did the EKG come out? Fantastic. She goes, oh, looks great. And I said, okay. Uh, you but- get your ticker checked every year? Yeah, every year. Okay. All right. And then so that's part of your regular physical. Blood pressure. I actually asked her if she needed to do uh, the old thumb up the you know where. I was like, is it, my, is it time for that? I'm, I'm good with all of that. I well, didn't you get gotta, that you, on my last physical, which was amazing She goes, she goes no, me. when you're 45. You, 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 you don't out. get that unless you tip anymore. <laughs> I said, when do I start doing that? <laughs> Give me whatever. You got to pull my ball hairs off. What, tell me what you have to do. Just <laughs> get it over with, right? So you think you like getting the EKG was uh, padding the bill? Padding the bit. bill. And I knew there was a problem when she said, oh, looks good. You know what we really need is a sonogram. And I to said, look at your ticker. To look at my heart. And mm-hmm. I said, well, how long is that going to take? She's like, 10 minutes. And I said, that's, I've had that. I've had that. I, that's a legitimate, uh, if you have a ticker issue of any kind, that is a legitimate process, Bro, in my it's opinion. It's been cleared. Like, I remember feeling like the $6 million man when I was uh, 25 years old on a treadmill at a, car, uh, a cardiologist. Running, 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 running with all the stuff on me. Then they right? make you lie down. Yeah, and then yep. they, they cleared me when I was 25. Like, done. No more right. murmur. Cleared. So I said, look, I went through all this when I was younger. Like, we do this every year. I've never asked. So you're arguing with the doctor about said, whether or not to get a sonogram. sonogram? At this point, I'm looking at dollar signs. And I'm looking at all the old signs on the wall. And I'm looking at the sparse front desk. I'm like, oh, my God, this place is in trouble. And they see a mark. And his Irish doctor said, I think what you need is a sonogram on your heart. <laughs> so did they do the sonogram? They did, and guess what? It's fine. Of course okay. it is. Did you, were you able to enumerate? Well, you haven't gotten the bill yet. No, right? I'm wait, waiting. For, I was like, Shannon, not not a good week. Or next couple weeks. I miss, think you might be okay. That's diagnostic. I think you might be all right. Depends on your insurance. Well, Mike. But I think you might be, uh, you might be all right with that one. I, I have never had so many things thrown at me and sold to me. In any of, and mind you, this is the first time I've dealt with this doctor, so maybe they're doing a better job. But right. I'm just saying, or business could be off because of the of the pandemic, and they just need to, you know, run up some business. Which I guess I'm okay with, but that's an extra hour of my life. I don't like. 
I don't need. I don't need that. I right? might crave at my advanced age a doctor who would maybe do a little extra. Yeah, my doctor is more like uh, comes in and goes, "Yeah, you look all right. See you later." <laughs> You know, and you've had that, there. that situation's been that way for a while. You haven't been a while since a doctor's actually there was, like, there, reached out, There right? was a throwaway yeah. comment that uh, really... Before the pandemic. Set me, yeah. uh, I guess, put me at... Uh, une- uh, made me feel uneasy. It was when she said, are you like living your life? Like, you doing anything? I was like, I'm actually starting to try to like uh, jog a little bit after the car accident. I think, this, I think this is like six months later. I'm finally able to move a little bit more. It's still painful, but I take... Right. Uh, I take uh, you know the Advil before I go. So when he says living your life, are you taking care of yourself? Yeah, yeah. And I said, yeah, I because right. I clearly gained a little weight after the car accident, a little. Oh, Jesus Christ, maybe twenty pounds. Um, so I'm str- I'm trying to get back out there to like save my life from becoming obese. Mm-hmm. And it's not that bad. Well, no, thanks. it's really it's okay. My, I appreciate that. Um, you you're not wearing my pants every day, being like, <gasps> I know. Well, um, so he says. By the way, when you come up to Maine and you wear your first set of long pants, that's the rude awakening. <laughs> Shorts are so forgiving. Shorts are the bomb. They are. The reason why fat old men in Florida wear shorts every day. Mm-hmm. Hey, we're getting a cold snap. It's 48 degrees last night. Yeah, I'm still wore the shorts. <laughs> she says to me, I'm still going out. You know, I've, I've been to the, the mall bars. <laughs> She's telling me this, my doctor. The doctor's been to bars? Yes. The uh, worst possible place you can go for the last hundred how old's days. The doc? She's uh, probably five or six years older than me, I imagine. Okay. Um, bars. That's just weird, right? There. I was saying, I was bars like, are like the one thing you say. Yeah, yeah. I was at a bar last night. Uh, it was well, it was more like not a bar as much as a rave. Yeah, um, I candy flipped last night. You know, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, no problem at all. So, yeah, but so so that. But I think the doctor's being thorough. That's that's good. Why is she telling me she's going to bars? Maybe she's hitting on you. With my shirt off and all the stuff on this yeah. bro- on, the, on this ticker that might be broken. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. How did that come up? But w- w- were you asking her about COVID? I, that was, I said to her, I said, um, actually, I asked her, yeah. I asked her, I said, what, how, is the co- how, is, how, is, how have you seen the COVID uh, hey, there, affect there's this There's a office? coffee mug. There's a coffee mug that says, Aww. hey, we've got taste. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I didn't buy this one. You're a Jesus sailor. Christ, who's got the? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Anyone? Did someone make it for you? <laughs> I have an anchor on my coffee. I asked her what the did COVID situation up? was at the office. Like, how are you guys dealing with the protocol? I actually like hearing this because we run a business as well. What what the protocol here is? Protocols. Yeah, and you've been yeah. very diligent. I, what I, didn't, did the... I didn't get the thermo check when I walked in. I got that at my dentist, but I didn't get it at my doctor's. Oh, let's see, slacker dentist uh, doctor's office. Yeah, yeah. Boy, so, of all places. Yeah, and then wow. that's when she rolled into like. Of course, yeah. they are giving you a temperature check when you get into the office. True. Right. True. First thing they do and is. And are they put not that allowed thermometer. to let people sick, sick people in? All they are, are sick, right? So, <laughs> for the most. Yeah, part. suppose. What does it matter? The doctor's <laughs> office. Were there people in the waiting room when you went in? No, which was great. <laughs> I see, said, "Do we have the same doctor's <laughs> office?" Because <laughs> by the way, the lack of pictures on the wall also indicates the uh, level of business that they're doing. Oh yeah, you know? it's just sad. Where, you, you roll in there. There's no one there. They don't no take one there American Express, you know? and I don't no. know why that. Is, but they it's like, don't. Why don't like, doctors' offices handle it like pediatricians' office, where there is a sick waiting room and a well waiting room? Sir, do you have a debit uh, card to pay with? Uh, hello, oh. Mr. Romero. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to welcome to Doctor Jason's office. Nice to have you yeah. with us today. Thank you. Well, I look yeah. and, and look, and, and this isn't an indictment. It's just when you when you push me through all of this, and then they they say, "Hey, um, we're gonna have to take blood." I said. This appointment was at 2.30 p.m. Um, like, I couldn't fast that long. Like, there's no way I had. I don't have that willpower. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's like, all right, just come back on Saturday. I do. Just, yeah, you do, Mike. I thought about you. I said, <laughs> Did I give you impossible. my cousin Teddy's line to me that oh, was the no. funniest line no, up no, there? No, 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 no. My cousins have great oh, senses of humor. <laughs> Teddy's really, legendary. They could do a show like this. Teddy is legendary. <laughs> so uh, I said, yeah, we're doing this intermittent fasting thing. I said, I said, well, how does that work? And uh, I said, well, like, for example, we, uh, we will stop eating for the day at uh, 5 o'clock, uh, and then we will begin, uh, you know, the next, uh, we will be- begin our, our, our fast ends at 11 o'clock. And he said, at night. <laughs> 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 
5 p.m., start eating again at 11 p.m., <laughs> then bag it at 5 p.m. the next day. Uh, very, very funny. But anyway, so... Uh, no, I got to go back this Saturday at 10 a.m. for blood. I have not gotten my blood work done since before the pandemic. I had a physical. He ordered blood work, uh, and I haven't had it done. I could be ravaged with disease right now. <laughs> the only test I've gotten is the swab up my nose. So I have no idea. Well, you don't have I that disease. Be, That's good. But the thing is, I could very probably be living on borrowed time right now because my blood work has not come back. I could be anemic. I could have <laughs> I could have something horrible all the with time? me. Look yes. at you. You're strong like blood. Mike, do you want to have another sip from that mug? Yeah, do you bruise easily? Hey, hold on just a second. Let me hold it up for you. I think I have some grog. Yeah, it's tea, but it's grog. <laughs> By the way, tea without any sweetener in it. Oh, yes, gross. which, uh, which is kind of a drag, to be honest with you. Still haven't quite gotten used to that one. I hear me hearty. <laughs> so, uh, so you get your blood work. Your heart murmur is okay, though. Yeah, they, there's no murmur. I said, yep. I know. How's your ulcer? Is your ulcer okay? The ulcer is. It, it's been contained, Mike. All right, that's good. Yeah, All good. Right. Big win. And, Big win. And, and did no you take any ventricle? medication? Well, yeah, the murmur would would have said that. The okay, so that's, yeah, that's so he's good. okay but, in that. Yeah. How so about the medicine? How about the medicine you took for your ulcer, which can kill you too? Uh, you know that drug that they're saying the lawyers are on TV saying now if you took this drug, Ilosec? Uh Yeah, or, or I don't yeah, take one of those. I take Nexium. That's oh, oh, good. Yep. Okay, that's the yeah. good one. The, and well, then, have you always taken the Nexium? Since I was, uh, I would say thirty. So, all right. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. now, number three on our old man comments list. That's the good that's one. That's a good one. Right. <laughs> and Rob, uh, checking in. Rob, checking in on your health. Any change in the uh, the uh, the time given? Oh, hold so on far? one second. Hold on. <laughs> got all the toes. We got all the toes. Very good. Not blue yet. <laughs> Not uh, yet. Right. Well, that's good to know. We can start the guy. And I'm I'm fine. I'll be I'll be a okay. I don't think you're uh, anemic. You look strong like bull. Yeah, but I am in Maine, which means uh, I could use an online psychiatrist. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's the Michael Mara Show. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. It's the Michael Mara Show. Michael Mara, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana. And now, from his easy chair, here's Mike. We are live from the Podcast Village Studios in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. This is the Mike O'Mara Show. Also in Virginia and uh, in the great state of Maine. Glad to be up here. Yeah, 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 We're also heard in Antelope, California, Hyattsville, Maryland, Downington, Pennsylvania, Atlanta, Georgia, Denby in Newport News, Virginia, uh, Hancock County, Maine. The uh, Mike O'Mara Show is uh, on right now. Oh, you gave me a new one, didn't you? Yeah, I have. Um, you give me a new one. Oh, I, I did. Uh, it it's, it's 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 in Maine. It was. Um, I'll find it for French you. French or something like that. Yeah, the Frenchman's uh, neighborhood. Are are uh, a lot of French people up here? Uh, anyway, <laughs> the show today brought to you by uh, Cornerstone. Let me share a letter from uh, listener Kristen, who uh, wrote a letter about Cornerstone. I wanted to let you know that we signed papers on our refi through Cornerstone Financial this week. Cornerstone First Financial. I called based on your strong recommendation just to see what options may be available to optimize our mortgage-related financial situation. And right away, we were not disappointed. We were able to lock down a 20-year term at 2.99, and we've saved years, shaved years, off our term at about 150 k in interest. It's a fact. That's a yeah, listener that's testimony. Numbers, bam. baby. Boom, bam. The, the process was easy, and both Joanna, I dealt with Joanna, and Mark were super personable and friendly and helpful and tolerant of all my questions regarding the details. We're so glad we could get this done and love you guys. Kristen, thank you for supporting one of our advertisers. So great. And sharing that with us. That that's They love to hear that at Cornerstone First. Cornerstone First will put your home's value to work for you. Uh, we'll come out of this together. They're helpful and they're good folks. They really, really are. Cornerstone First will be there for you. 202 625 1221 or cornerstonefirst.com. Cornerstone First Financial. Personal attention from application to closing, and they're actually in our building yeah, in Washington, D.C. You know what's so great about that letter is the one word tolerant because people are scared to go and make a big financial 
decision Don't like be. that. Don't be, because Money's they will cheap. hold your hand and walk you through it. People are scared of everything. People are scared right now. People are angry right now. News you may not need. You'll have a story about a guy in my Costco, Rob. A oh viral God. video that was born out of my Costco. We'll tell you all about that. People mm. are freaking out. I had uh, freaking out in every corner. Yes, I had to. Um, and actually, this is. I hate to come out of uh, an upbeat song with a dead dead relative story, Mike. Uh, but I had two uh, distant, uh, I guess, uncles pass this past week. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. One from one from. Uh, he already had like a kidney disease. The other one, um, uh, we don't know yet because he he was like a bachelor, like. Could it have been the Covey? We don't. This is what's sad, and this is for all of you that like to live alone and uh, not not be loved uh, at the end of your days. Like this poor man, like an architect, uh, world renowned, one of my parents' friends, like a true family member to us. Did he do the Stadio Olimpica? In Santiago, oh, Chile. Did you design your <laughs> Stadio Olimpica twice last year? <laughs> Hello, Manny. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I laugh too. That's fucking great. Uh, excuse my language. Sorry. Uh, so he says, uh, my mom says, he goes, you know, so-and-so just passed. And I said, man, I was like, Wait, I don't think he was married, right? He goes, yeah. His sister just found him after being passed away for about a month. <laughs> so like, oh. like almost mummified? Yes. Oh my oh, God. Oh, that's right, bad. Right down here in Foxhall. And I was like, man. Like, wow. this is why, like, you need at least a friend in life, right? To be like, how many hello? family members, how many mo- How many brothers and sisters does your mom have? Um, so, in much like in, uh, I would say, I can't speak to the African, the black community, Mike, I can't, like, African American, I can't do that. But the right. Latino com- uh, community, if you are part of someone's life within, I would say, more more than a decade, they become a teal. You know, a uncle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so they uh, might not be blood related. They're not blood re- bl- Yeah, it's like one of these okay. like family things, right? Tia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my one Theo had a kidney issue. Uh, God rest his soul. He, he passed a uh, week before uh, 4th of July. 4th of July is when we found out that the architect uh, from the Stadio Olimpico passed. <laughs> and he. And we don't know what, what We don't know what yet. caused, but it made me really do a little soul searching for about 10 minutes as I was, was in front of the grill with my mom. I said, um, hey, mom. Do you think he was happy at the end of his days, like just being alone? Do he? Because he, he always talked about like ah, I'm going to Argentina, ah, I'm going to Spain. Ah, I'm go-. like he was just he would do whatever he wanted in life mm-hmm. on his own. But he didn't have anybody. He didn't have anybody. He so had, he died he, very. I mean, he yeah, literally he had, died. He alone. was a swinging dick, man. He had so many girlfriends. He had every toy. He always had the Mercedes SL convert, the newest model rolling through. Like he was. There's nothing sucking on his financial teeth. Yeah, but at the end of the run. You, you, your friends and your family are, are what matters. That's yeah. uh, I've I've watched that. I've lived that. I understand how that works. You know, and it's what keeps me up here. Now this is it's what keeps me from I, putting I that for sale that, sign in the front yard all, <laughs> every week. Thank you for bringing up family. Yes. Let me ask you this. Yes. When is it too soon to ask about his car collection? <laughs> <laughs> because there may if be you're an not, opportunity. But, but, but I'm even, family, if he's, even if he's See, technically, you're not family. Your your family, your your family in the. I would in have a gone and sense. found him. I would have gone. He has said, no hey, other. Man, do does he have any blood relatives? He's got a sister who is also single, like no kids, and that's it. And that's it. And no kids so, for her. So I smell sad funeral wake virtual wake on Zoom, and then hey. Are you going to go to the funeral? I will go to the Zoom funeral. Yes, sure. He'll get that link. Zoom funeral. He'll double. You get a better chance to get. If there's a real in person thing, you got a better chance of getting the car. Yeah, cards. mask up. Mask well, I don't up. Want car. Cars. I don't want to buy a car. He's got. I, look, I just think that. Do you have a couple of cars? He's got three. He's got three. Cars. Yes. <laughs> you are. You're. A you know monster. what's. You know what's amazing. I'm just saying. Wouldn't you want it to go to someone that loved and appreciated his collection from day one? Did Oscar you have can enough- leave him lying in state, decaying for a month, but knows the number of cars he has. That's that's a, that's, well, that's a little right Facebook there. friends. Okay, See sure. When around. was the last time you had any meaningful? in a while. Hold on. What was the la- when was the last time you had any meaningful? Before my dad left, we had dinner together with my father before he left okay. for, the, for the COVID. Did world. he appear to be in good? Uh, he looked health great. That that's point? why it was so shocking. I actually looked up the one and I said, "This man is living the best life I've ever seen." A man. How old would he have been? Eighty-five. You made it to, he was describing him like he had girlfriends, like yeah. he was a 33 year old dude, you know? Yeah. Uh, no, you, I think that's fine. I think it's too early. What What you do is you insinuate yourself into the arrangements Yeah, okay. is what you do. How can I help? 
That's right. You might be behind the curve. When did they discover him? Uh, the Independence Day. He declared his own independence. <laughs> you mean? I thought the other guy died. Oh, the other guy died before yeah, the before, fourth. Yeah, before the yeah. fourth. And then this guy, the fourth of July. Yes. You, your time's a wasting. You know, you better get you better Time's a fleeting. Right. What Time's you need to fleeting. do, Oscar, the quote is this. There are so many things that need to be taken care uh, of. No, I don't have Please time. allow I'm me not, to help. Uh, I, look, I feel How cool. bad do you want the car? I, oh, I, if it's a if it's a <laughs> su- substantial discount, yes, that's fine, but no, 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 no. I don't need Communi- a car. Don't commiserate need with uh with Rob. Nobody knows how to get stuff out no, of relatives I feel more scummy. than Rob. I don't I feel scubby. I, I no, can't no, do no. It. I can't do it. You I have thought, I had thought Rob about it. Rob knows how to do it. Rob knows. Rob plays that like a yeah, but he, fiddle. What did you get a Buick from your father in law? Yeah, and I hate it. But I did get the grandfather <laughs> clock from my uncle George. <laughs> Love that. Love the grandfather. And clock. you've gotten things from dead relatives over the I years, right? Sure, I, sure. Yeah. I. It's not. I a, would sanitize anything you got, though, Oscar. It's a new ball game. <laughs> <laughs> It is. It is. Uh, well, good luck. Yeah, I just keep us posted on this. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what do, do you know? What the cars are? What oh yeah, the three they're, cars they're, are they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, so is there really a Mercedes like a late model Mercedes uh, there SL? Is, oh no, he's got a Porsche Boxster, like a real Porsche Boxster that I can a never lovely afford. Automobile. I'm sure that'll yeah. go to auction. Mm. That's gone. Um, he has a is eighty-five. It a, good for him. Yeah. Well, he never. All he did was he was he was flown around the country, around the world, and he built buildings, right? Right. But that's wonderful at eighty five to even have that in your garage. Yeah, well, he, is, yeah. a, is a big deal. I and I know this because the last time we were there, we went to his. My dad and I went to his place. And I'm used to eighty five year olds. The nicest car they would have in the garage would be a Lincoln MKZ. Well, and f- they were all covered up, right? They're all covered up with uh, the car the Buick, covers. The Buick Lucerne. And right. I think he spent <laughs> most of his his life. I guess his fortune, if there is one. On these vehicles, because he, was the Porsche in his garage featured in Ford versus Ferrari? No, no, that no, old? no, 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 no. Okay. But he lived in a like a <laughs> in the penthouse of a condo building. So when you'd pull into all park, right. you'd see all his cars with covers on them. Okay, just getting that. Oh, yeah. in the penthouse? I don't know. That's the, probably not. That's got to go. I'm thinking of something that's reasonable that I could afford as a family member, right? Which is probably like an SUV uh, that they'll be like. Is all the right. is the sister it? Is that that's it? it. That's it. How old Your is mom she? Close to, mom close to this uh, uncle? My mom's helping with the arrangements. But That's she's only helping as much tray. as you can without not going anywhere, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. How old Does is your mother the know you well? <laughs> oh, no. She, I haven't. I know my mom would. She would damn me to hell if she heard me talking like this. I got to laugh. I got to laugh and figure, make fun of this or else it wouldn't be sad. Uh, Oscar, somebody knocks on, <laughs> on this uncle's door. Oscar comes to the door of the penthouse in a smoking jacket. <laughs> Oscar, Oscar comes to the door like Matt Damon and the talented Mr. Ripley. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Hello. And, and like the relative comes in and looks down at his feet and he's wearing his uncle's slippers. <laughs> like Matt Damon in that movie yeah. when, uh, when what's his name, Philip Seymour Hoffman <laughs> comes in. <laughs> He's like, Remember Hello? that scene? That's oh, a no. great movie. That what are you movie doing here? Gives me, right. Still to this day, gives me the heebie-jeebies. Oh, Matt it's a total Matt heebie-jeebie. Damon it's fantastic. It's such yeah. a scumbag. <laughs> By the way, I get sad still when I watch any movie with Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah, me too. It just is a still a tragedy that he's gone. Because, you know, Moneyball, when he plays the manager, Art Howe. Yes. God, I hate the fact that he's gone. Damn it. Goddamn drugs. Too soon. Man, man. Oh, man, that's why I told my son. I told my son, and I, I said, you know, drugs, I'll, I'll drive you to jail. I will drive you to jail. Do not do that. It will ruin your life. And but along anyway, came Polly. Uh, I don't think he gets enough credit for that role. Yeah. I am him as his proxy. Oh, <laughs> and also Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights is when he came to Boogie Nights where attention. he plays the horny yeah. uh, yes. production assistant. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> He's brilliant in that as well. You know? I mean, it's, it's very sad. I think that, uh, you know, uh, I'm always encouraged. You know, as much as I think it might be a tad distasteful to have this discussion, it's also fascinating for those of us that okay. you know like to watch people uh, this, gamble. This was an uncle that, um, and I remember my dad had two. My dad had two friends that were basically uncles. Uh, one was a heart surgeon that passed away with a heart attack. All these guys go early. I don't know why. He actually went early. He went when he was like uh, roughly 62. Did he get a sonogram? As a heart surgeon of all things, right? This is right. a guy who hunted. He was from Texas. Hunted, blew off his finger. And then, like, wrapped it up on his own. Mike, you okay? <laughs> checking my, just checking my pulse. <laughs> Mike's in that target zone. Um, yeah. 
And, but every time he'd show up, he knew my dad was like a complete, he was so cheap. And dad, I hope you're listening to this. You probably never will, but you were so cheap. He saw the way we lived as kids, like with nothing, right? Right. Uh, and I say that in regard to what my dad made. God bless him. He was the a uncle saw the way you lived as because kids? Because he'd come over to uh, Ola, uh, you know, Dr. Ceballos' house and- he comes from a mansion in uh, Texas, and we were in a little townhouse because my dad was deathly afraid of us getting deported every year because he was a year-to-year-to-year contract. So I respect my dad for saving this money. So he'd roll into this townhouse that he had five people living in, uh, and he'd be like, oh, man, these kids, like they're not getting any love from my, my, uh, my cheap friend, uh, Dr. Ceballos. Uh, right. So he'd give us 100 bucks when 100 bucks was probably like $500 when oh we were kids. Oh, my God. He yeah, would hand a, you a C-note? A C-note. It's like a million dollars back then. How old were you when, he got, when you got your first C-note, roughly? I was Probably like ten years old. How that had Jeez. to be a man. You may uh, there. You go. This is the right? uncle. Yeah, yeah. So then, you got to mm. speak at the funeral. The other uncle, same deal. He knew my dad was cheap. He was like, these kids deserve a better uh, lot in life than running around these used bicycles. Um, so <laughs> he, would, <laughs> he would light us up every time. Be like, all right, kids, come on over here. And he like drop us a hundred dollar bill, crisp hundred dollar bills, and I'd be like. This is like big, again. Oh, speaking of used bicycles, thank you to my sister for giving my son. The uh, bicycle from my uh, niece's uh, older son, who oh, outgrew that's it. Sweet, excellent, very, very sweet. happy. That is very, very, very sweet. cool. That's very, sweet. very happy. That's Thrilled different. That. That's different. Mm-hmm. That's different than, than the bikes yeah. that my dad would get us. Um, By the way, the Walmart here in Niles was sold out. Didn't have any bikes. Oh well, I can see that because everybody goes up there and they have to buy new bikes, right? Right. Uh, but I mean, it's just weird. A lot of lot of weird things sold out. Weird, weird things sold out. Garden hoses sold out. Uh, Oh, yeah, we ran into Depot. that. Mm. We ran into that. We had to, we had to order online. Out. Yeah, that Stuff is you weird. Think was sold out. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I said, uh, I, and then the lady was offended at me up here in Maine when I when I said, uh, "Do you have garden hose?" She said, uh, "I think we're sold out." And uh, I don't know why she got so hissy with me. I said, "What are people wiping their asses with garden hoses?" <laughs> uh, without a mask. <laughs> you said it without a mask. Through the mask. <laughs> are people. Are people wiping their asses with garden hoses? You know, I'm sorry I made this entire sh- the front of the show about me, but I just need to get off all- that off my chest. Well, I, 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 you know what? Please keep us posted. Yeah, yes. I'd like to know. And uh, you know, if you come driving in in some, uh, you know, wonderful exotic car, uh, you know, it, do you know the other two? It's the Porsche Boxster, uh, and then uh, an, is there a Mercedes? He's got a Jaguar XK, like the ones that the the what's uh like an the, old the like an old model X- E E type Jaguar E type. Okay. Yeah, All right. That's which, a nice car. Which is just gorgeous. Right. Powder blue. Amazing. What's the third car? Uh, it's a uh, Mercedes G Wagon. You know, I have a soft <laughs> oh, spot. Oh, oh my God. Oh, God. That's where you got Do you the. Remember when the I whole... tried to. Because yeah. you have okay. to try to get this yeah. car. I was inspired not by Transformers people. That's a big deal online. Like, oh, it's a Mercedes. How close are you to the sister? Um, She called me when. She called me after she called my mom because she couldn't find my mom to tell her about the past. So she has my number. And she can't yeah, last so. forever, Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got my so, number. Man. How old is she? Uh, she's roughly, I would say, 70, 71. She's my mom's age. Okay. okay. All right. You Oscar, can, I know I, you're not big on taking selfies, but I would in the next week love to see one of you in his slippers with a single car key <laughs> on a golden fob. <laughs> I know what car he wants. I know I what car he well, wants. And also, yeah. he buried the lead. He did a yeah. whole segment. It's got the Mercedes the car Mercedes. that he's in love yeah. with. My, My Mercedes. Mercedes. I, think, I think it may be like a 2013. But that's okay. That's a, yeah. that's right in your wheelhouse. That's fair. Sure. <laughs> he's already thinking about it. I can it. maybe get a loan. Yeah. <laughs> Keep tabs on him. He's yeah, a hustler, knows. that boy. And it he's was a, never submerged in salt water like the other one. So uh, you're in good shape. you remember when the uh, Albanians tried to screw me out of that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Albanians. Uh, we have to take a break. Rap bastards. When we come back, the segment we will be doing is, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> no one told me. No one. And I blame Everybody, <laughs> we will come back with that right here on the Michael Mara Show. We love those promos, listeners do if they're good, and most of them are. No, yeah, they people are. like Jim Amato and Paul Christine. Thank you so much for that. Hell Welcome me. back to the Michael Mara Show, brought to you by Sleep Number. As more places reopen and we safely enjoy summer, uh, quality sleep is more important than ever. Yeah, uh, even if you're not reopening, we uh, you know we could actually have a debate about that one. Sure. Uh, not only is it a natural immunity booster, good sleep, but uh, it also helps with energy and recovery. 
I love the way I feel when I get out of my sleep number bed. That's mm-hmm. a fact, Jack. I've been talking about it for a long time. I, I could never go back to a conventional mattress. I never could. Sleep number to the rescue for everybody. From feather soft to super firm, you can adjust it. It's got a controller that you yeah. adjust. Move. We don't talk about the details because it's been around for a good long time and they've perfected it. You get your sleep number setting, your wife can get her sleep number setting, and it's fantastic. Here's a fact. Compared to average sleepers, sleep number bed owners enjoy almost an hour's more of sleep per night. Think of that. Well, quality sleep is one of the best methods to boost physical and mental health, and that's important now more than ever. My sleep number setting, it's an 85. Carla's is still a 65. We love it. Discover proven quality sleep for your health and well-being with the sleep number 360 smart bed. For a limited time, save up to $900 on select smart beds. Shop your way at a Sleep Number store or online at sleepnumber.com slash TMOS or by chat. You can do it that way. Come on, chat it up, baby, and make sure they know that Mike O'Mara sent you. Thank you. All right, so I mentioned before, why didn't you tell me? Mm-hmm. When I talked about a dog, I, yeah. talked about, uh, I talked about my relationship with the dog, uh, Winslow, the new member of the family, the Boston Terrier, the uh, puppy, 10 weeks old, 10 or 11 weeks old, just a tiny little dog running around, a tremendous personality. Uh, Carla, the dog whisperer, mm-hmm. absolutely a uh, constant companion. Everybody knew that. Everybody talk about that. It's boring. It gets you get tired of the whole thing. Right. The dog has nothing to do with me. The dog has more to do with me now than it did before. I can pick up the dog and it will lick my face and I can cuddle with the dog and it is not completely freaked out. It you, don't still does the nervous, you don't have the You don't have the Pepe Le Pew relationship anymore. Yeah. It always wants to get away and get in Carla's lap. That's what the dog okay. likes. Last night, um, one of the there are a couple of moments I have. Uh, sat on the couch and had the dog fall asleep in my lap. I have uh, had the dog lick me uh, in the face in the morning, wake me up, which is really great. That's These are little signs. I didn't get that from the pug. I get this from this dog. So they're, they're, you're telling me, and by the way, uh, Luna, the, uh, Luna. the oh, Spiewak girl. dog sitting in back there, very attached to Rob. And uh, going to be dog. tough to let that one go back to its family. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure we're going to let her go. I think I'm, I'm going to keep this one. She Sweet does dog. love you. Look at you. What a beautiful dog. So I sweet. love that dog. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> the Mastiff. So this, uh, this pug, uh, last night, it will always gravitate towards Carla's chair, towards Carla's body in the sure. bed, uh, and it will walk away from me. And it will ignore me in many cases. Last night, I hear, uh, and I look down, and next to my chair, as I'm watching a little TV, is the pug nestled up against hey. my chair? And I said, "Hey, Carla, come and uh, and look at this." And she goes, "Oh, that's good. See, it's happening." I said, oh, "Yeah, I think you might sweet. be right. That's a good thing." About three minutes after that, I get a smell <laughs> from. I think if you were to, if I can describe the odor that came from the floor, the odor would be if anybody has ever seen the Amityville Horror. When James Brolin, the old version, yeah, the when original. James Brolin goes into the bedroom where the flies are, the, and, and oh. no, the priest, the priest, when Rod Steiger playing yes. the priest goes into the bedroom the where the flies thing, are yes. and suddenly gets nauseous because of yeah. the smell, there is, uh, it is as though something crawled in and died in the primordial ooze oh. and came out of this dog's ass. And I, why didn't you, I, look, there is no and he's dog. he's tiny. He's tiny. Tiny and a puppy. There right. has never been, there has never been a creature. I'm not, this, I am not overstating. I'm not talking dogs. Mm. I am talking about a creature, human or canine, that has produced the odor that came out of this dog's ass. Oh. This gas that this dog has is unquestionably the foulest I have ever experienced with that. And uh, Carla did a dive on it, and apparently the breed, hallelujah, is known for this. Oh. So this is going to be my lot in life. We're going to be sitting there with family coming over to have dinner, and I'll be chatting, and suddenly this is going to happen. I had no earthly idea that Boston Terriers were known for their flatulence and their stinky fa- flatulence. Now, and now, that's what we have. Beluga was a farter, right? 
but nothing, not even remotely, <clears throat> not even close. Like clear the room, Frankie. Gas. Yeah. yeah, clear the room. Like like I'm like, what is that? Every time, let me give you. I, maybe I can put it into context by saying, right. every time this dog passes gas, I look around to see if there's anything on the floor. Oh, oh no! Okay, I'm, I'm with you. That's with how you. pungent it is. I, I, that, that you could put this in a bottle and use it as a friggin' bear repellent. <laughs> this is how bad this is. So, uh, Mike, I don't do. Um, <clears throat> I would say the raising or feeding of uh, our animals in our house. Uh, my wife does. You've got a labradoodle. <clears throat> Daisies yeah. come out of that yeah, dog. So he, he doesn't have. He farts rainbows. <clears throat> the only time right. he has bad gas is when we don't feed him what my wife likes to call the raw food diet, which I think is a better diet than what I get. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Asan's Freshly because Freshly is a 10 out of 10 in my book right uh, but so the dog when I wanted was being uh, what I thought reasonable and just giving him some puppy chow uh, had bad gas and when we yeah, first what are you feeding what are you him, I'm sorry to interrupt I'm, I'm curious what are you feeding there's right something now? What called is, a raw food diet I do not know enough about it but it, I know it's raw meat that is supposed to correct the gas I think a raw meat would make it worse like, yeah ever since we've been on this this diet and by we I mean my wife taking care of Santos no gas. Well, all I know is, uh, you know the scene you know in Silence gassed? of the Lambs when Jodie Foster walks downstairs into the basement looking for the kidnapped girl and opens the door up and there's a tub yes. with a human being yeah, yes, cadaver yes, yes, in it? Yes, sure. That's yes. the smell that I guess. I will feed this dog. I will feed this dog filet effing mignon to get the dog to stop <laughs> I, passing I gas. I really believe, ju- and we all know what foods uh, create a certain level of gas within ourselves. Mm-hmm. Right. By now, right? Mm-hmm. Right. I think that it's that same system where for mm-hmm. different dogs, different foods create a level of gas that is tolerable, that is respectable, right. that is non-existent as well. What are you fe- what are you mm-hmm. feeding Winslow right now? Or what is Winslow uh, eating right now? I'm What do you got? Uh I I don't Carla would know that, but it's a it's a dry uh kibble kind of it's little, little nuggets. Cuz my uh, vet told oh, me Oh no no no. I wait, wait combos? she just sent Nope, she just sent me the note. Oh, okay, you got yeah. it. Uh, f- uh Purina farts a lot. <laughs> We're feeding a period of parts a lot. <laughs> but let me just say, since nobody warned me, mm. I'll warn you. If you want to get a dog that will give you the experience of going up with the Blue Angels after a full breakfast, <laughs> go ahead. Enjoy yourself. There you go. Have fun. Knock your socks off. It's great. Oh, buyer uh, beware. Yeah. Oh, nasty. So nasty. But cute as the Dickens and a face licker, which I have Aww. never had in recent memory. I love the fact that he's a, but he, uh, I, I'd almost bring her in to show you. He nips too. And he's got those little razor puppy teeth. Sure. He caught Carla this morning because he doesn't chew on my face because he's afraid of me. He right. licks, licks, licks. But he chews on Carla, and so he caught with one of his puppy canines the side of Carla's nose. Oh no! And she said, "Ow, ow!" And I think you know it's Carla. She goes, "Ow!" She mo- she takes her hand away, and there's blood dripping off of her nose because the puppy tooth oh, uh, got the claws, it. The claws, and, right yeah. Now, yeah. And Mike, one of the nostrils is gone. One of it's gone. She pulled a Mike Tyson <laughs> on Carla's nose. Winslow the puppy. <laughs> Nasty, and I, you know, and I, and then Carly got mad at me because I probably should have been more upset about it than I was. I'm sure. sorry. Uh, anyway, well, uh, I'm jealous. I'm not a, I'm not a good well, person. You know we'll what? Actually, yeah. this is lucky. Maybe this will destroy her sense of smell, and she won't be bothered by the gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then you won't know if you got the COVID. That's true. It's true. Uh, anyway, thank you. It's always that. Always comes yeah, back to that. Always. We'll take a break. Come back with more on the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Drink of water. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, this portion of the program brought to you by Noom. If you want to lose that quarantine weight and lose it for good, you got to make some changes. That's why I love Noom. Noom helps users learn to develop a new relationship with food through personalized courses. Noom teaches you why you do the things you do and gives you the tools you need to ditch bad habits and replace them with better ones. Noom is not a diet. It's a healthy and easy-to-stick-to way of life. My favorite part is that Noom has one of the biggest food databases available. It has literally everything at a glance. It's food tracking made easy. Ultra helpful when you're cooped up at home. It's the best. Uh, Oscar and Carla have been talking about Noom for a very long Mm -hmm. time, and it's worked for them. You don't have to change it all in one day. Small steps make big progress. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to sign up for your trial today at Noom. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash T-M-O-S. 
What do you have to lose? Visit Noom.com slash TMOS to start your trial today. That's Noom.com slash TMOS. You are going to love Noom and... Uh, you, you, you know, get it get it started because uh, otherwise you're just sitting around the house and you're not doing anything. Uh, uh, I got Rob, a text get from you. Julia during the break. I just want to tell oh, everybody. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Do we have good news? Drum roll. If the fact that the lab is not answering their phone this morning is good news, oh, then yes, Rob, good I'm news. I'm so sorry. I'm so... F- Ooh, I don't want to use a bad word. I know, anyway. but I'm out of my mind. Jesus. I was laying in bed staring at the ceiling last night. I just want an answer for this poor kid. I told you guys on the pre-show, she is so sick and tired of being quarantined in a room that for the first time since we have moved to Leesburg, her bedroom is straight. Mm. She's mm. cleaned her room. And just That's for how those, gorgeous. If you're just joining us, uh, Rob's daughter got her COVID test uh, last when? Tuesday. Last Tuesday. Yeah, she yeah. woke up with a, a slight yeah. fever, 101 and a half, I think. And so we took her in for a test. They told her three to four days. And they keep saying that because of the holiday weekend, there's no results. And now they're not even answering at the lab. So she's trying. And hopefully you're even we'll having COVID soon. dreams, you said. You had a COVID dream last night. Yeah, I did. I, it has to be because it was. it took place in... It was one of those dreams where it was you, me, and Oscar, but it wasn't you, me, and Oscar. You know what I mean? Like it was, and so uh, it was, my mind drew the parallel of the pandemic and the Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson, Batman movie where they were going through the crisis with Smilex. So everyone was being infected. New and improved Joker products. (laughs) (laughs) So that's the game. So, and this was, this is a dream that was so vivid and so in color and so, alive that when i woke up i actually took notes because i remembered every detail we finished the show and mike said let's go out to the palm i said great i said let's go to the palm and so we go to the palm but the palm's at a strip mall and you know how like at a strip mall it'll be a sign with like big block letters that just says like nails or, you know, something like that, or spa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, right above the palm in the strip mall, and it, it was in Florida because it was hot, it, it said, hate. <laughs> in big letters, just the word, wow. hate. Wow. Jesus. Wow. So we go into That's the palm, dark. and all the pictures are on the wall like they do. You know, in the palm, one of the things they have is caricatures of people on the wall. But, Mike, you look at me and you say, I don't know any of these celebrities. I don't know anybody and i look and it is i said that before but it's people i don't know anybody on the walls and the mater d comes to see us and the mater d you would think it might be like tommy giacomo no but it's jb james brown and he's very very kind but he does not know us and i keep saying you've been on our show um, he says we're gonna have a table for you right away we have a table for you right away sir i said don't you know no so he sits us down and i makes look me sad and, when you bring up tommy makes, i know just makes me sad mm. and tommy. so Everybody, we look around. So not only do we not know any of the faces on the wall, but everyone in the in the restaurant looks horrible because they're under the Smilex pandemic. So they like they haven't shaved. They've got bags under their eyes, and all the women have on makeup. It's really awful. But then, as we sit down, there are three beautifully prepared old fashions at our table, and I say, "Well, what are these?" And JB James Brown says. Beck Bennett from Saturday Night Live sent them over. And I look over. Beck Bennett. <laughs> Although he's a good cast member, I like he him. He is. He does a, a business You must baby. really love him. I, I'm i not anything mm-hmm. towards him, but I look over and the entire cast of Saturday Night Live, the male cast, is at a table. They look good, but they're seated there with the Joker, who is Jack Nicholson, and he's having a great, great time. And I said, this is this is great. We should send them a drink. And you, Oscar looks over and says, they don't need money from us. Let them buy their own <laughs> drinks. That's Saturday Night Live money. They don't need that. I said, okay, wow. so I want to tip what James Brown, and I pull, and this was the most OCD part of the dream. James Brown up, is our waiter? No, he's our maitre d. We haven't even seen a waiter yet. The drinks JB, were added like to- like the TV personality? Yeah, JB James Brown, All from right. fo- formerly of Fox Do I don't know how that works. Well, if you want to get I, a good table, you do. Oh. Yeah, and especially the fact hmm. that he took us right to a table and we had drinks there. This all I now makes to, sense. I go to my wallet, <laughs> and I open it up. And the money, I've got a lot of cash for some reason, but it's all out of order. And so it's like I go to like get like a 10 to give him, and it's a 1 because it's not in order. And it's and that's you know, driving you. That's your biggest oh, anxiety. That is, I mean, and that really is, and it really manifests itself in a dream. Is so that, if you have a wallet with like uh, 10s and 20s out of order, does that drive you nuts? Oh, it's got to face the same way. Hold on. I'll show you. Hold on. 
Really? I didn't know he was that I didn't that know bad. people were still using paper money. I didn't realize that he was that, that his OCD was uh, manifested itself in that. All right. Ones, 20s. Yep. Tens. All in order, all facing the same way. Mike, That's got to be. When you've got any, everything uh, in front of you that you right. can organize, he's got his, yeah. look at his microphones are perfectly organized. I, go, right. I don't see why his cash wouldn't be. That makes sense. <laughs> you know? Oh, and you know what? It used to drive me crazy if someone at Safeway would have a disorganized till. Oh, Do you still crazy. use cash? I feel dirty when I touch. I sometimes use cash. I mean, I used, you, it. I used it yesterday. Hmm. Don't you and, think that's uh, like yeah. the way to like, especially in this COVID era? And I could be completely wrong. No, I went to the hardware store. I was buying a new doorknob and uh, I tested it by <laughs> licking it. And then I gave the person uh, a <laughs> chant. Then- I said, uh, I, and I said, uh, you know, I said, do you want this penny? I said, yeah. She said, why? I said, I like to suck on them. <laughs> like the taste. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I finally was able to fish out a 20 and I tipped JB. They brought us another round from the Saturday Night Live people. Then the Joker stood up and started to address the crowd about Smilex and then I woke up. <laughs> oh, God. I have a question. But it was so vivid. Weird, Did man. you take any uh, like NyQuil or anything last night? No. As a matter of fact, last night was a rare night that I didn't even drink. Wow. So, I mean, I was just pure. That was NyQuil weird. NyQuil will make you dream like that. Um, yeah, it does. Fever dreams. For the for the Mater D, is that at every establishment, if they're taking you to a table, you have to tip them to get a good table? No. No, 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 Absolutely, no. Absolutely not. not. No, no way. No, in fact, rarely do, would you tip a Mater D. Yeah, I wouldn't but, do it. I mean, I, I, and sometimes you know. it'll get you up on the list if it's a fancy restaurant. I've tipped at the uh, before we had. Like, I don't think I, ne- I never tipped uh, uh, Tommy uh, during the time, and God rest his soul, never did that. Oh, uh, I know, did so. for uh, Brad's bachelor party was at the Palm, and I tipped Tommy for that, I believe. And he, and I'm a rube. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like a rube. Remember that I, show I, Don and I did years ago when I didn't tip anybody, and I found out about it. Like, <laughs> you don't tip your mailman? Nope. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. Well, it's no, hard to I, tip if your money's out of order. I think that's what we learned. And remember, oh, Mike, my money, sorry. Remember, Mike, the name of the Florida <laughs> it, Palm. It might be out. <laughs> the the thing that it really I don't understand is that it was in a strip mall and it was called Hate. That was so I can't strange. believe you guys don't Oh, use... my money's in order. <laughs> both, of, both of them? <laughs> the two bills? I shit you not. I have $6. <laughs> <laughs> to my name. Pony boy, do you do you use cash? I don't really, except for parking, but I do keep it in order. You do? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. But it's yen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have to take a, we have to take a break. And Mike, uh, when we come back... Uh, yen was yes. the perfect currency. Yen. Yeah. Yes. yes. And remember, uh, Pony says he doesn't use cash except when he does. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Uh, we'll take a break and come back with uh, news you may not need right here on the Mike O'Mara Show. Jealous of you, Polly. Polly Christine, uh, sh- you know, uh, Mike O'Mara wants to raise some money for the podcast. You know, three likes. Polly Christine shows a plastic bubble that he has around his bus driver's seat. 7,472 likes. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Anyway, I, uh, yeah, I'm jealous. Uh, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show brought to you by Home Medics UV Clean. I hate to tell you this, but your phone is 10 times dirtier than the toilet seat. It's true. That is simply a fact. Now more than ever, it's important to keep items like your phone clean. Because if your phone isn't clean, your hands won't be clean either. Homedics UV Clean Phone Sanitizer is a portable pouch that cleans your phone instantly with UV light. It kills up to 99.9% of bacteria and viruses at the DNA level using no harmful chemicals or liquids. It sanitizes, it disinfects both sides of your phone 10 times faster than other products on the market, and it does it in only 60 seconds. This is an extra layer of protection you need, perfect for the busy person, plus your choice of cool colors as well. You can use it wherever you go. Everyone at TMOS loves it, and you're going to love yours. Oscar's been using it for months. Even with overwhelming demand for UV Clean, Michael Mara Show listeners can get free shipping plus $20 off a future Home Edix purchase. Just head to UV Clean. That's Get UV Clean, not UV Clean. Get UV Clean.com. Let me give that again. It's getuvclean.com. Use promo code TMOS. That's G E T U V C L E A N.com and use promo code TMOS. Don't forget, every time you wash your hands, you need to clean your phone too. Getuvclean.com. And that's something you can do for the rest of your life, people. News. News. All right, as many of you know, I have. Uh, I've been at the rodeo a few times. I have. Uh, 
I've been married, and uh, you know, it's uh, I always pay attention to people that have problems. Uh, fortunately, I've come out on the other side of mine, yeah. and uh, everything seems to be a okay. Uh, Johnny Depp, uh, he's going through a hell of oh a time. Oh my god! Oh yeah, for a right long now. time. He's got a libel suit uh, that kicked off yesterday, and he took the witness stand right away. Johnny is suing a British tabloid for saying that he abused his ex-wife, Amber Heard. Uh, Johnny uh, told a lot of uh, stories while he was (laughs) on the stand, some that don't paint him in the best of lights, uh, but here we go. Johnny admitted that he started doing drugs at around 11. He said his mother used to ask him to get her nerve pills for her. And eventually he started sneaking them for himself. <laughs> That's Quote, his mom, n- Bonnie Depp, right? <laughs> Bonnie Depp. <laughs> it was not, according to him, quote, it was not a particularly stable or secure or safe home life. Hmm. That's my Johnny Depp impression. I like Sorry. it. But he added uh, that his well-documented issues with drugs and alcohol never made him, quote, undertake violence against anyone. Johnny also revealed uh, that he gave his daughter, Lily Rose, marijuana when she was 13 years old. Mm. Eh. Mm. But he said he was just being a good dad. Johnny's messed up. Yeah. Well, I think he quote. was doing it. He was preparing her to be the business manager for a podcast. <laughs> he said, "He said <laughs> I knew that the marijuana I had myself, that I smoked myself, is trustworthy, is a good quality. I was determined not to have her try any drugs out there in the world because it's too dangerous. I was being a responsible parent. No, you yeah, okay, trying. okay, Elvis. Duh. It's prescribed, uh, so it's safe. Uh, Johnny also accused Amber of being the physical abuser in the relationship and said that the last straw was when she or someone else left number two on their bed. Ooh. <laughs> this is, she left you know a, what troubles me about that ooh, statement? Ooh. If I can yes. pull the curtain back. She or somebody else. How many right. people are in their bed in such a way that they can do that and not, yeah. you and know. who's got the core strength? Well, That's it, true. It, it happened on Amber's 30th birthday party, uh, right after her 30th birthday party in May of 2016. Johnny wasn't there because they were already on the outs, but the next morning, someone left the surprise uh, on their shared bed. First, Amber blamed their dogs, and then she said it was a harmless prank. Oh. Johnny pointed out that the dogs are little Yorkshire Terriers. Sure. (laughs) And wouldn't have been able to get up on the bed themselves. Also, the surprise that was left behind was too big to have come from them. So we don't know if it's Amber or not. Johnny's lawyer also accused uh, Amber of having affairs with both Elon Musk and James Franco. Um, There's there's a joke I can't tell on the show, but I texted it to you guys. I think you'll enjoy it. Very good. All right. That's exciting. I don't know where the hell. I dropped my phone. Uh, Moving right along, everybody. The newest product that's sold everywhere is... Beach chairs. Beach chairs. <laughs> People are buying them for socially distanced outside activities, so they're becoming uh, harder to find. That's uh, that's the very, very latest. Disney yeah. World in Orlando is still planning to reopen on Saturday. Smart. Even as coronavirus is skyrocket in Florida, and there will be a parade of idiots that will yep. be walking into the uh, Disney World. It's... It defies any kind of making sense Universal's at all. Universal has been open, I think, for a couple weeks now. Yeah, it's and stupid. I don't, well, I don't know how they're getting it done. I don't get it. It's a different world. Well, I was excited for a while because they passed the rule that they could open Bush Gardens and King's Dominion if they capped it at 1,000 attendees a day. And I thought, you have to make a reservation, but do you know how great it would be, just in theory, to go to a theme park with only 1,000 people in it? You wouldn't wait in line for anything. Sure. All right, but then enjoy yourself. Well, no, I I wasn't gonna. I was just theorizing. Board on deck. We're good. Just theorizing. But then (laughs) they said they can't profit on a thousand attendees a day, so they're not reopening. I don't know how Disney's gonna do it. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, these are not the discussions we should be having. No, Mm. you don't get to go to a theme park, toddlers. You don't get to go yet. People are dying in Florida. I don't know. Oscar's doctor's going to bars. God almighty. Anyway. Have you been to a bar yet? I love uh, whiskey sour. You, you live this, in your is, life. Uh, this is definitely one for uh, tourist destinations to get people to come back. A campsite in uh, Tarragona, Spain is offering coronavirus tests on site to all guests. Nice. So they can make sure that everyone inside is healthy and no one will need a mask uh, or uh, distancing. Well, that's okay. Okay, that would yeah. be a little different if you knew everybody got tested. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. the that's get the guaranteed way to do it, you know. That's the rule. Although 
they're not all, always reliable. Or you told, can't get correct? one in 10 days, apparently. Well, yeah. you have to make sure you set aside two weeks for your vacation. <laughs> Especially, <laughs> here's another idiot. Uh, is it Hayir? It's J A I R. Is it Jair? Hayir Bolsonaro. Uh, the president of Brazil has a. Uh, I sent it like Trump there. Brazil, United <laughs> States of America. Jair Bolsonaro, the president of Brazil, has tested positive. He's one of a handful of world leaders who's uh, dismissed how serious coronavirus is. Brazil is only behind the U.S. in terms of cases and deaths. They compare this guy to Trump the way he poo poos it. Uh, let's see. A guy in Florida had a freak out. When people uh, ran into him at my Costco. Down oh, wow. Damn. Wow. This is a viral video. Rob, if you don't have it on the audio vault, you might want to grab it for tomorrow. All this right. is a guy in Florida that went out of his mind. A video of him went viral. He's been fired from his job in an insurance agency. And a woman, uh, uh, this this guy, a woman videotaped him. He said, get the F. I feel threatened. I feel threatened, which many people this. say oh, is, is the this? stand your ground law in Florida. Fort Myers, Costco? Yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, is this, I think I have the tape here. Hold on a second. Here right, it is. Here we go. I'm, I'm not, they're not a goof. You're six feet away from you. You're harassing me. My I'm not harassing you. You are infecting us. You are, you are coming close threatened. to me. You are coming close Back to me. Back off! Dance. Threaten me again! Dance. Back the f*** up. Put your f***ing phone down. Yep, I had a little I meltdown feel for right that, there. Uh, the woman in the back, Dan. Dan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please stop. You're like, oh, not again, Dan. I was Good the same for, way uh, when they switched to Pepsi at the snack <laughs> bar. <laughs> Good news for uh, this company, because you probably knew it. The APA has uh, approved two Lysol products as ways to disinfect surfaces to protect against uh, coronavirus. So, oh, Lysol, good. there it is. You Mike, probably knew just, that. Just briefly, but. with uh, this gentleman in Florida, uh, it's amazing how people still don't realize how quickly people can find out where you work and how you uh, make a living. Because right. within the... Instantaneously. Like, oh, yeah. His company let him go, say, uh, put a statement out that this doesn't uh, really reflect the mission of the insurance company. Right, and they had to. It. They had no choice. That's it. He's gone. Yeah. That's how powerful luck, it is man. in the, in the age of social media. Thank you very much. Glad you enjoyed that meltdown, your lack of control. Uh, your most anticipated life moments depend on how old you are. For the uh, top life moments with Generation Z, uh, it's a three-way tie between traveling to new places, buying a house, and finishing school. For millennials, the top three are having kids, buying a house, and traveling. For Generation X, it's uh, Gen X has having kids, getting married, and buying a house. Baby boomers, boomers, it's having kids, getting married, and watching your grandkids grow up. Uh, boomers were also the only ones who put retirement in their top five. Mm. And, well, uh, for me, didn't, it's ten. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mine didn't make the list, which was, of Let's course, see. the sweet release of death. Okay. Yes, you've been <laughs> talking about that for quite some time now. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I gave a hard time to Spirit Airlines when I talked about oh, their yeah. chairs oh, yeah. and their seats. A lot of people did some. Spirit Airlines did something pretty cool last week, and they couldn't have done it if there weren't empty planes sitting everywhere. A four-year-old girl from Puerto Rico had a medical issue on a flight to Philadelphia, and it had to land in the Turks and Caicos. She's okay, but her family didn't have their passports because they're not required if you're flying from Puerto Rico. So Spirit got them food, clothes, and a place to stay, and then flew an empty plane just to get them home. Aww. I think Spirit that's Airlines awesome. deserves a little, a little credit for that mm -hmm. one. I think that's wonderful. Way to go. Spirit, we appreciate that. And now a little something something. There is a 44-year-old guy. I just love this guy's name. His name, Don Peters. Hi, it's the Don Peters get-together. How you doing, Don Peters? Oh, he hey, also sounds Don like Peters. someone who might work down in receiving. Do you have hey, trouble? Uh, you got to call Don Peters. He's in receiving. Uh, Call HR. Get Don Peters up here. We got to straighten this thing out right now. Anyway, he's a 44-year-old. Uh, his name is Don Peters. He went into a subway in Akron, Ohio on Saturday afternoon. He was drunk, and he started demanding that they make him a sandwich. Because <laughs> when you go into a subway and you're drunk, you don't really ask for one. You just demand it. Make That's me weird. a sandwich now. You're an artist. Yeah. It becomes so, very important to Don Peters. <laughs> Don Peters wasn't happy with how they were doing uh, so Don decided that he would force his way behind the counter to make his own sandwich. Oh my God, Don! Does Peters. this sound any more like a drunken move than this guy? Perfect. Going, All right. Yeah. You know, no, not that much. Hold on, hold on. 
Let me go back there. Uh, well, the cops were called. They came and they found a, a bottle of vodka on Don's person. Oh, good. And, and also, he pocketed a block of Subway's cheese Ooh. at some point big, and block. put it in his pocket. Big block. While he was making his sandwich, he was arrested and charged with disorderly conduct, criminal damaging, and having an open container. Like I say, if you're going to go behind the subway counter when you're hammered, leave the vodka in the car. Please do. <laughs> it's always been your policy. Right. And for God's sakes, don't steal the block of cheese. <laughs> Oscar, you do you go. think, as I do, that this wouldn't have been a big deal if you went into the subway on Wisconsin Avenue, oh which is the most God. disinterested subway in the world? Uh, you want five uh, foot long? Uh, no, I'm just here in line for nothing. Whatever. Lechuga, sal y pimienta. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, bueno. And they give uh, you that we'll look be- of like, let me get the other sandwich artist to make that for yeah. you. Oh, tomate. He stole the block of queso. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, we will take a break and uh, come back. It's not queso, is it? What is it? It's queso. It's queso. queso. It's queso. Yeah. It's queso. queso. Yeah. Okay. Bueno. Uh, we'll take a break and come back with uh, more fun on the Mike O'Mara Show. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. We needed it. You suggested it. So we're doing it. It's the TMOS Patron Society, something we've never done before. Simply put, we are asking for your help. We need you to do uh, this for us and go to MikeOMaraShow.com and click on the Patron Society banner and make a pledge on TMOS. One, five, ten dollars a week or any amount you want. It's entirely up to you. Your patronage is the fuel that will keep this show running. TMOS needs you and uh, you can make a difference. We know that you get it and we appreciate it more than you know. Your support is a testament to the fact that you want this show to keep on keeping on. If you can contribute, please do. Your support means the world to us. Now more than ever, we appreciate you and we thank you. So uh, for those of you that have donated, we really appreciate yes. that. For those of you that have yet to donate, uh, thank you, thank Please. you in advance. And <laughs> without further ado, let's open up the uh, audio vault with Rob Spiewak. Take it away, Rob. We all are different on this show, but there's certain things that we share. And Mike, you and I know this, that if you live a clean lifestyle, you'll be healthy and happy for years to come. Amen. And I th- think we proved that last night when we listened to this man speak on Ringo's birthday special. Hi, everybody. I just stop by to make sure he doesn't get too tired doing this by himself plus which a lot of money's been bet on whether he can blow out 80 candles (laughs) that was joe walsh yes oh my god did you know he's i forget this he's ringo's brother-in-law oh that's right Uh, because they married the box sisters so okay. yeah, all right. That's how it happened. But, uh, but uh, I mean, Joe Walsh. Uh, Joe Walsh has made a true uh, transition, but he still sounds like he's wasted. Yeah, you all know? the time. Just yeah. like Ozzy, the damage is already done. You can't extent. undo it. Is that you from like? Is that, is, does, does your voice stay that way from the drug abuse? Well, Joe Walsh was always one of the great radio guests because, hey, man, oh, okay. he sounded yeah. like that. Yeah. There you go. It's a combination of a little bit of drugs and that California. California, <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> hey, play it again. Yeah. Play, that, play that Joe Walsh again because really, right, right. this Hi, is, everybody. yeah. I just stopped by to make sure he doesn't get too tired doing this by himself. Plus, which a lot of money's been bet on whether he can blow out 80 candles. <laughs> so there you go. Yes, Ringo's you go. Uh, Ringo's essentially served as an MC. It was an all-star thing. There was a couple really neat things. Cheryl Crow did a great version of All You Need Is Love, where she okay. played every instrument except the horns. But then, I like this, Ringo actually turned it into a thing where he's standing against injustice. So he's using his 80th birthday for good. There's no greater act than any of us can make than to stand up and be counted when you see injustice. I don't have to tell you that the Beatles' early success had a lot to do with the influence we found from American artists. We love listening to Ray Charles, Little Richard is my hero, Stevie Wonder, Sister Rosetta Tharp, I saw her live at the cabin. Black Lives Matter. Stand up and make your voice heard. And you God should bless know, you, Ringo. Yeah. God you should bless know that you, Ringo in 1965, Star. the Beatles had it in their contract writer, they would not play to segregated audiences in 1965. Mm. So they you know, were way here, ahead of the curve. The young people up here that are uh, quarantining up here uh, in Maine, in uh, some of the neighborhoods that I've driven through, have put some uh, BLM signs out on lawns and Black Lives Matter. Awesome. Uh, you're seeing it around here in the great state of Maine, which people talk about, you know, the, one of the whiter states in the, the world up here. And it is gratifying to see and then to find out when I did a dive on it that uh, the young people have done that. 
it uh, it warms my heart. It warms my heart, Absolutely. especially uh, you know coming from the state I came from. I'm really really happy about it. Way it's different. It's different up there. It's a little bit different. Okay. Well, in certain areas. Yeah. <laughs> so my- it's all complicated up here. Don't get me to. I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll talk all right, about all my anxiety, Rob. All right. Okay. Don't ask those questions that put me on the spot, please. Thank you. Next time you sign a half a billion dollar contract, know this: it's going to take away some of your freedoms. Patrick Mahomes has stuff he can't do anymore mm. because he signed that contract. Whoa. Yeah, I still don't think I'm allowed to play basketball. I'm sure baseball is not going to be allowed as well. Uh, I know there's a lot of them. I mean, they have like everything from like jet skiing to every, I don't know what all the, the things are. I, re- I read a lot of them, but it's it's every pretty much physical activity you could possibly do. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'll probably be sticking to football and video games for a while now. Yeah, so that's he's, a, he's a good, good guy. Him. I like yeah. the guy. I hope he has it's a great like, career. He's you know? so unassuming. It's he like is. one of your friends winning the lottery. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. And he's, what it he's is. a winner, yeah. and he's a yeah. great winner, and he's a yeah. great quarterback. A clutch, like one of the great clutch quarterbacks. I think Very this is cool. going to be a good run. I you wish see, him the best. I really. I do. would love to go jet skiing with him, but apparently that's not going to happen. <laughs> you can't do it, Rob. Yeah. No way. Uh, Mike, are you familiar with a golfer named Ian Poulter? Oh yeah, Ian Poulter's a British guy, fancy lad. Uh, wears uh, wears wild pants and uh, and, and really is a. Uh, he's not only a great golfer, but he kind of came up hard scrabble through the ranks. He was right. not a rich guy, and when he hit big with sponsors and stuff, he's got a car collection. He wears wild uh, outfits, and he's a amazing Ryder Cup player who does, you know, really has the fire of the belly when he plays for Europe. I'm kind of a fan of Ian Poulter. He's well, kind of, I think he can gonna, be a bit of a nad sometimes, though. I think you're going to enjoy this tape. Then perhaps one of the things he also enjoys is rich food. Uh, this crossed my path yesterday. He likes he Indian was, food. Yeah, he was playing at the Travelers Championship over the weekend. In and, my uh, uh, hometown, yep. Mm-hmm. Let go of the pretty good fart. And here's the deal. You oh, know how, really? they have, how they have the tees mic'd <laughs> so well so you can hear the, the hit of the club? Yeah, and you don't have the crowd sound, so you hear every little nuance. Uh, what's great is listen to this because he definitely lets it go, and then he owns up to it. I believe his oh. quote is, <laughs> did you get it? So we close with fancy lad Ian Poulter. Oh my god! Oh, you oh gotta play god. that again. Oh and I love my the god. fact that you said, "Oh yeah, he's kind of a fancy lad." Mortifying. But I guess you can say he gave right, it all he got. I'm going for a three for. I'm okay, going for a three we can do for that. that one. What is the wet sound? Oh, I don't want to know. <laughs> That's your magic audio ball. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. Oscar with the tip in. Thank you very much. That's it. I don't want to know either. You're right. Why do I ask those questions? Oh, my God. All right. We got to get out of here. Hey, thank you for your support on the TMOS Patron Society. We really yes. appreciate it. It's new. We didn't want to do it. We had to. It's COVID. You know. You know the drill. God bless you all. Uh, we'll be back with another one tomorrow, everybody, for Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana. Anna, Michael Mara saying so long, everybody. Don Rogers. Ciao, ciao. Before Peters. you go, please Peters. make a mental note. <laughs> Today's show was made possible by the TMOS bonus package. Same thing. You can secure yours right now like, by who? going to MikeOmeraShow.com and clicking on the red bonus banner. Buy it or give it. Either way, you're helping out TMOS, and that's a good thing. Thank you, and go in peace. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. So what do you want me to do, drop my pants and fire a rocket? I'm a phony, just like you. Bye-bye.